Now, I am going to give you another problem, where we will use mathematical some, math, some mathematical concept that we have learned to solve, that one is also difficult. Now, we are talk, going to talk about something called quasi linear preferences. Let us say in two good world, preference is called quasi linear, if utility function representing this preference can be written as or and b y. What it means is that utility function is linear in one of the arguments and not linear in the other argument. Then we say the utility function, the utility function represents quasi linear preference, fine, is it clear? So, now let us take a problem, where what we have is maximize a, let us instead of v x, just for simplicity, let us take log a log x plus b y or if we are using x 1, sorry, v is a function, it is not mono, it is not same v as the earlier one, if it is confusing you, take it as w that it is a function of x. What I mean to say, an individual is said to be having quasi linear preference, if the utility for function representing his preferences can be written in this particular form. And what is this particular form? That it is linear in y and also this is additively separable in x and y. That x and y are not appearing as in a multiplicative term, they are additively separable. Okay. Then the preference is called quasi linear preference, fine, is it clear? So, let us say it is x 1 and it is x 2 and here we have maximize, this is the last example we are talking about and then we will move to next topic x 1, x 2, a l n x 1, this is natural log, l n is natural log and let us say b x 2, fine and the budget is p 1, p 1 x 1, p 2 x 2 and it should be less than equal to i. How will you proceed? Indifference curve, okay. Draw indifference curve, how would it look like? Of course, you can solve it using indifference curve, later on we will see that, but right now I want to give you the flavor of mathematical technique. So, let us solve it using the concept of marginal rate of substitution, the concepts that we have learned earlier. Okay. So, what we can see here, let us say, here we have amount of x 1 and what we should put here is m u 1 divided by p 1 and what is this m u 1 divided by p 1? The gain in utility if you spend 1 rupee on x 1. So, to do this, what we need? We need to get m u 1 and what is m u 1? A by x and m u 1 by p 1 will be a by p 1 x, is not it? So, how will it look like? p 1 is of course, given to you, you do not have any control over p 1, it is parameter that does not change in short period. You can change it as modeler, you can play with it by, you can study the effect of change in p 1 on this entity but typically in it is given to you. Okay. So, how would it look like? 1 by x graph, something like this, okay. fine. And how about, let us calculate m u 2 divided by p 2, again this is for good 2 and what do we get? How much is m u 2? B, b divided by p 2. 
So, how will it look like? It is the same, okay? it is a straight line horizontal line. So, what we are doing is here, we are drawing first with respect to m u 1 p 1 with respect to x 1 and then m u 2, let me use the different color m u 2 divided by p 2 and this is this is with respect to x 2 and deliberately I have put it on the same graph. So, what it means is that up to this level let us, I am calling it x 1 star, why it will become clear immediately. From 0 to x 1 star, m u 1 p 1 is greater than m u 2 p 2, no matter what is the level of the second good, it is independent of the second good. Fine, what does it mean? What does this equation mean? What will be your interpretation for this equation? He will buy more of the first good. More of first good or he will buy only the first good up to this level. Unless this level is achieved, he will not buy the second good. Because let us say right now, he has k comma 0 okay? and k is less than x 1 star. So, it makes sense for him to spend one more rupee on good 1 rather than on good 2. So, he will keep on buying good 1. You can think, you can stretch it little further, you can say he is starting from 0 comma 0 and of course, first unit he should buy of good 1. Why? Because m u 1 divided by p 1 is greater than m u 2 divided by p 2 and he will keep on buying good 1 until he reaches the level of x 1 star. And once it reaches the level of x 1 star and he still has some money left, because there is a possibility income is again a parameter, income is given to him, there is a possibility that given his income, he is not able to buy x 1 star of good 1. If he is not able to buy x 1 star of good 1, in that case his optimal level of consumption would be the maximum amount of good 1 he can buy and zero amount of good 2, is it clear? But he has second condition, second situation is that he has let us say he has already bought x 1 star amount of good 1 and he still has some money left. Now, what is happening? That in after beyond this, beyond x 1 greater than x 1 star m u 2 divided by p 2 is always greater than m u 1 divided by p 1. So, it means that once he reaches to the level of x 1 star, he would no longer buy any more of good 1 and he will start buying good 2. So, what is happening here? This is a very nice situation if you understand it that he has income. What he do? He starts buying good 1 okay? and he keeps on buying good 1 till he reaches till he reaches x 1 star and how can we get the x 1 star? Do we have any way to figure out x 1 star? How? That at this label it is m u 1 divided by p 1 is equal to m u 2 divided by p 2 and we have value for both of these entities and how much is m u 1 divided by p 1? A by p 1 x and m u 2 divided by p 2 is b by p 2. So, it is independent of y. So, x 1 this gives us x 1 star and x 1 star is a divided by b p 2 divided by p 1. So, unless he accumulates this amount of good 1, he will not buy good 2 and to buy this much of good 1, how much income does he need? P 1 x 1 star and that is a by b p 2. 
So, what we are saying that if income is less than a by b p 2 and of course, greater than 0, okay, then he will buy in this case x 1 star is going to be equal to i by p 1, because he will buy only good 1 and x 2 star is going to be equal to 0, fine, is it clear? What if he has, what if it is more than a by b p 2, what happens in this case? x 1 star is going to be equal to a by b p 2 and how about x 2 star, because this much is going to buy good 1. So, it is going to be i minus divided by p 2. So, can you say anything, can you make any comment about this scenario, that x 1 is kind of a necessary good, you know this person does not consume any of good 2 unless he has sufficient amount of good 1. Fine, that is the situation described by this particular kind of utility function. Is it clear?